My favourite line in the movie is where Coogan says, I run factory records. I think. And it's like, you're like absolutely, who the, who the hell knows? No one has the foggiest idea. The rationale... I think the rationale was inside Erasmus's head somewhere. No, he never told us what it was, but it was inside Erasmus's head, I think. Or was there a rationale? That is praxis, that it's in doing it you find out. So, you know, for Rob's phrase, we just put some records out with my mates, you do it, you do what you want to do, you know, and let's do this. And in doing it, you find out why you did it. And, you know, we did it because we bloody loved music and it made a, it made a statement about the fact that you don't have to behave and do this and do that. And for a while, you don't have to promote and in other ways, you don't have to go this way. So, but you discover that just by doing it. You do what you want to do. It's, and if there's one, another rationale for us is willfulness. I think it's the one word that summed all of us up and our, most of our musicians, everybody else, it's just being bloody willful. And willfulness is not a crime, I don't think. Um, I can remember in the Hacienda cocktail bar one night when I'd, there was a bunch of high energy fans from Preston who kept coming to the cocktail bar every Friday night, this is pre-house, playing fucking high energy. I was like, oh. So one night I put Mozart on, uh, and forced the bar, bartender to put Mozart on. So they all started moaning, whinging, wah, 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 wah. so I'm going, you know, and they go, you know, well, we want it and we're the customers. And I said to them, listen, love, Sid Vicious was once asked whether when he made his music, he thought about the man in the street. And Sid answered, no, I've met the man in the street. He's a cunt. And that particular phrase is perhaps central to our philosophy. To be the guy who signed the check that paid for the labels on Atmosphere by Joy Division is actually such a privilege. And I kind of remain in awe of that, of that sense of privilege. And, you know, and I can be all flash and bullshitty and the twat that, um, that is the popular image or whatever. Uh, but deep down inside, it's like, if that's the price you pay for being connected to this wonderful stuff. Mm. You know, and I think that's why factory, this whole thing about the style and the design and the packaging and the rest of it, um, I just think it was like, can I use the word sacerdotal? Is that a correct word? The, 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 the whole idea of actually putting out, of actually creating a piece of music with some genius musicians and then it, this being bought in a shop by somebody. It seemed to us, all of us, to be somehow a sacred thing. And it was like, well, this is such, you know, what a privilege to be doing this. So we'll, we'll do it as well as we can. The writer, whose name I don't remember, which is remiss of me, said, while we marvel at the drugs and the craziness and the ecstatic atmosphere of the night, let us not forget the rhythm section. Paul Ryder and Gary Whelan at the Happy Mondays, single-handedly, and with Sean's guidance and Sean's direction, single-handedly adapted that the, the brilliant, innovative house rhythms of Chicago and Detroit from the mid-80s to British post-punk, Indian punk, and created a new music. And uh, they did. They did it. They were wonderful. They were wonderful because, you know, I mean, as the film says, it was probably a very bad idea. You know, hello, he takes drugs. Hello, they take drugs. Well, now. Well, now. What shall we do now? But um, it was great. It was fantastic. I mean, the real achievement, I mean, I, I, you know, I am an elitist, I love my own bands, I hate everybody else, I love all of the bands, they're all shite, and um, I'm particularly proud of being associated with an operation that had two bands who produced two classic albums in different styles back to back. <laughs>